guys. Today we're going to talk about who makes who. So before we get into this, I need you to understand three terms. First one is OEM. The second is ghost. And the third is outsourced. Okay, let's explain what these mean. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer. So let's understand what that means. It's sometimes usually described to say a company is an OEM for another company. In other words, SAMIC is an OEM for Fender. That is not a true statement. OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer, really ties into this kind of concept. Chevy makes a truck, but they don't make the tires for the truck. However, they need the tires for the truck to be completed, so Bridgestone, Bridgestone makes the tires. And even though Chevy didn't make the tires, the original manufacturer warranty, when you first get it, will encompass the tires, even though they didn't make them. In our world, a perfect example is you buy a Schecker guitar with a Tone Pros bridge. The Tone Pros bridge is defective. You wouldn't contact Tone Pros. You contact Schecter because they, uh, even though they didn't build the bridge, the bridge is an OEM product. That means it's the product that they do use on their guitar. Okay, so that's an OEM. The next term is ghost. Ghost is for like ghost builder. A ghost builder is exactly like a ghost writer. If I wanted to write a story about guitars right now, I could hire a professional writer. He would write the story. He wouldn't get any credit and I would take claim to it. Um, so just like a ghost builder, a good example of a ghost builder is uh, Strandberg Guitars had uh, Strictly 7 ghost build some of his guitars and also Washburn Parker ghost built some of his guitars. Uh, so you're really not aware that somebody's making the guitar different than the Strandberg guy, but they were made for him. Now, he does now do an outsourced, so that brings me to outsource. Strandberg now has a Korean manufacturer make some of his guitars. Those are outsourced. We all know what outsourced is. We're all afraid that our jobs are going to get outsourced one day. In other words, find somebody who works for cheaper than us. So today, we're not talking about ghost building, and we're not talking about OEMs. We're talking about outsourcing. So let's talk about that for a second. The outsourcing guitar companies, in other words, companies that are notoriously known for making a lot of other people's pr product, are the three biggies. Samick being the biggest. The next biggest is Court Guitars. And the third is going to be Musical, nope, sorry, World Music Instrument Corporation. Okay? Now, there is a lot. So let's disparage some rumors real fast. There is a rumor that two or three companies make all the guitars in the world. Nope. Uh, they make a good chunk of them. Don't keep in mind there's lots of manufacturers. There are so many manufacturers you can't even name them all. In China, there's about 30 or 40 guitar manufacturers. One I've dealt with in the past is Kao Shoshin. The company is called Kao, but so Shoshin is the state or province that they're from. So they incorporate that into their, incorporate that in their name. Okay, so let's start with Samic because they're the biggest. Samic is an Indonesian company, and they were known for, known for making some guitars in Korea, but they're an Indonesian company. Okay, so <coughs> Samic also owns Steinway, like pianos, and they even own percentages of other big companies. But mostly they're known for making silver tone guitars, and that's an R, I guess, and uh, Epiphone. Washburn. We'll tie that in in a second. And um, Squire. Right? And Honer. And here's where it gets tricky. Part of the agreements with Samick is that when they make a guitar company, uh, guitars, they don't tell you. But then when they stop, they tell you because they try to bring in new business with that. So these are builders. Now, Squire doesn't do a whole lot of business with Samick anymore, and we'll talk about that in a second. And neither does Washburn, but they do some. And the reason is, is because a lot of these companies have found, and Epiphone even, have found cheaper Chinese manufacturers to go to than Samick. Samick is known for making good guitars, um, but that's the more you're known for making a good guitar, the more you want for it. So to find a new cheaper manufacturer, there's always somebody in play. Now the big player, the next big player on the block is Core Guitars. Now, Core Guitars was a Korean manufacturer, and when the Korean employees kind of said, hey, we want to be treated better and paid right, Court shut down the factory and moved to Indonesia. Now, when I just chuckle right there, that's nothing against those people in the situation. It's more of the craziness of hearing that story, but it is true, so you know. Um, it just sucks. So, Court Guitars uh, makes Ibanez. So, you know, they make so much Ibanez, they actually own a ton of the intellectual properties of Ibanez. They do make Squire. 
And they do make Jackson guitars. What, Jackson? And my, oh, you know what? They're also, they own a company called Mighty Might, uh, which you might know them from parts. That's where the OEM comes in. So these companies make so many guitars, they also make parts and they sell the parts. And then the parts become OEM products in other guitar companies' guitars. Now, San, or sorry, Court is easy because if you own a Court guitar made in Indonesia, the serial number will always will start with a big I. So if you own an Indonesian guitar and you want to check after this video and you see a giant I, most likely that in, will insinuate that Court Guitars was the builder. Now these guys obviously make a lot more guitars. Court also makes uh, Conklin's stuff and they make, um, they make, um, what else? Oh, uh, uh, Elric, right? Um, they are notoriously known for making small guys. Court's difference than Samick is Court will do small orders and big orders. So that's where they're, they're known for doing that stuff. Both these companies make very good guitars. You cannot go wrong. Now, of course, then there's World Musical Instrument Corporation, and they are the biggie for quality. They make uh, the Gretsch Electromatics, okay? And they make uh, PRSSE. And they make Chapman. And they make LTD, especially uh, the Korean ones, the nice ones. They make Schechter. Um, and they make, I mean, it's pretty much easy. They're like the last standing Korean factory so uh, that is large. So if odds are if it's made in Korea, it's mostly made by them. There's only a few smaller com uh, factories in Korea. So that's World Instrument Manufacturing. What's nice about these guys is they don't make anything cheap. They don't make any student great instruments. So they make good stuff and that's just kind of how they keep that. That's how that goes. So, uh, and they do small orders, which is why Chapman goes to them because um, they can take an order of 5,000 or they can take an order of 50. Uh, so that's a big deal. Uh, although the price is gonna change a lot. So these are the, uh, like I said, these are the subbed out uh, companies that are subbed out by brands. Now, a lot of you guys keep hearing, you know, all this craziness, but you have to understand that the Chinese market is still new. So it's been new in the last 10 years and it's been taking up this market. Um, Samic Guitars, so I said we get back to them, Samic, you might know them as a brand called Greg Bennett, right? And Greg Bennett was a designer for Washburn Guitars, and he left and started, and started designing guitars for Samick. Samick wanted their own line of instruments, and so they sell their own brand of instruments as well, called Greg Bennett. And uh, that's because they make so many guitars, might as well appeal to dealers that were looking for more margin and a little bit higher quality, uh, but not have the brand name on it. So that's how that is all done. Now, the next category that we'll go into is strings. The MIG, the MIG mix conception on strings is, is that, uh, is that string manufacturers are, there's only like two or three and they make all the strings. That's not true. Um, what is true, where that, that rumor gets kind of, kind of comes from is a lot of string manufacturers buy their wire, the wire that they make the string from a few manufacturers and then they wind their wire. So very few string manufacturers actually, you know, process and make the wire and then start from scratch. So that's where that comes from. So string manufacturers, I was told when I opened 10 years ago that there was only three. Uh, no, there was dozens. Now there's a uh, half dozen or so big ones in the block. Obviously, D'Addario is a big one. Um, and D'Addario makes Fender strings now. So Fender shut down its... Uh, so Fender, so you know, when they bought... Fender bought Squire. Squire. Squire was a string manufacturer. So they bought Squire to make strings, so they'd have a string company. Then they took the name and started putting on the guitars and made the strings under the Fender name in Mexico. Um, and they did that for a while until they decided to shut down the Mexican string part of the factory and they outsourced to, to Diodario. So Diodario makes Fender and I think Diodario makes um, Harky strings, right? That's probably one. Um, you can't, they can't hide because a lot of the strings they make have the colored ball ends. You can't, oh, they make Eddie Van Halen strings, EBH strings. Right, that's a biggie. Um, so, so the, that's how that works. So, just like the other companies, the string manufacturers also make string companies, as other strings as well. So that brings us to the next part. So, why would you buy from these companies that are sub companies, or you know, right, not being made by the main company? Well, that's easy. Um, what I like is to think of it like, like I said, the recipe, right? Yeah, although you can have the Diadero can make its own strings, it does make other company strings to their recipe specifications, and that's what really happens. 
you know, the big thing to always remember is if you had an idea to start something tomorrow, it's hard to build a factory and employees and all that stuff and, and just go. It's easier to go to these guys and do that. So that's the main, main reason. I'm, again, not defending it. I'm just explaining it. So let's talk about the last section for a second. Okay, this last section, I call it the O-E-M-L-I-E. -E. In other words, the OEM lie. Okay, so here is the thing that I, you guys, I, the only thing I have problems with. Let me explain this to you. So, a manufacturer like, uh, we'll use Schechter. And I love Schechter, guys. Don't, don't, don't understand. I, I'm not picking on any brand. I just can, you know, they're all guilty or they're all not guilty, depending on how you feel about this issue. Schechter Guitars, they say, hey, we want Grover, Grover, tuners to be our OEM for our guitars. And Grover sells them tuners. Okay. Made in the USA. I don't know how to keep I'm typing too long or writing too long. USA. Made in USA. And we want Seymour Duncan pickups. And Tone Pros. And that builds a quality guitar because, you know, they say, hey, look, we can have the neck made, we can have the, the, the frets made, we can have all this stuff made, but we want top quality components on there. OEM. In other words, what we talked about in the beginning of the video, original equipment manufacturer. In other words, these brands will support this brand in its construction of its instrument. But this is where the lie comes in. So Schechter says, and not, not specifically, but a brand says, wow, that's a lot of money for these things. Is there any way to get the price down? So here's what happens. Oh, this is the part I hate. So then Grover goes, yeah, we will outsource to this other tuner company, this other machinery shop to make our tuners. So we will make cheaper tuners that say Grover. So now the Grover isn't Grover. And Seymour Duncan will outsource to like a Korean manufacturer and they'll make Duncan Design, right? And Tone Pros will do the same thing. And that's eventually what happens. So then what happens is you have this guitar, the Schechter guitar, and it has fake tuners, fake pickups, fake bridge. Now, I'm calling it fake because it's, an, it's, it's outsourced. So in other words, what really happened was is these brands put their name on these products so that this product comes across as a better deal for having these brands with it, right? Well, that's essentially, we, we're going to start back where we started with the story. If Chevy says we're going to use Bridgestone, Bridgestone tires on our, guitar, our trucks, and ship them out, to, and that's a value added. And then all of a sudden they go, well, people know the brand is being value added, so now just have the cheapest manufacturer make the tire and then slap your name on it, and then that way it perceives as a value added. So what's funny to me is I don't care. These t this company making the fake tuners was probably the company that was making the off-brand tuners for Schecter in the first place, the off-brand pickups for the first place, and the off-brand bridge. So you were buying a Schecter before with all undis undisclosed named products in there, and you had no value added, but now because they hold these brands now, they're value added, but they're not because those companies that had those brands lent to them don't really hold that to be true. So to me, I have a problem when manufacturers <coughs> outsource to a company that then outsources to another company outsourcing. So at some point you have to, you're, you're confused. You can't even figure out what you have. Big, big guilty companies. Fender's guilty. Gibson's guilty. They're all guilty of it, right? I don't know why I'm doing that. Fender and Gibson. Um, right? Uh, Gibson guitars. Now, a lot of the new Les Pauls, I, uh, you know, work on them and, and the bridge is cast and it's not, a, you know, it's not a quality bridge point at all. They're not machined. Um, the tuners are made in China. You know, you're just seeing more and more of that. Um, and, and you see it everywhere. And so, so what, you, what I want to just kind of bring home with this is, yes, the guitar companies are outsourcing, but then the parts companies are outsourcing and the string companies are outsourcing. And so at some point you can't even figure out what it is. It's just a list of names. 
know why I'm writing this, but I am. That equal to nothing, right? So it's basically you feel like you've bought value added products, but you really were just given brands onto the index. So, so that's, that's the name of the game. And so, um, how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, simple, you know what it is? You touch, you know, what's great about a company with a quality product. I'll pick on one I like to pick on, which is Grover, um, because Grover's were good tuners and, um, and now sometimes they suck and every time you get a bad Grover. And so I can tell, I used to be able to tell by touching them, I can tell by looking now. If the Grover logo on the tuner is caked and caked, like caked in chrome, like to where the, 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 the print isn't very precise, that's a cheap cast crappy import tuner with a Grover logo printed on it. And if it's nice and crisp and looks like it was actually pressed out of a nice machine and stuff, that's where it's quality. But what's funny is, is, you know, when you get a guitar and you look in the back, you go, oh, Grover, so I know what I'm buying. You didn't. And so you have to now touch and look, and you can't kind of trust the brands that being honest with that. Very few brands are known for uh, giving you what you want, except for the Paul Reed Smith Core Series uses pretty much all the right stuff. But even that, that's on the wishy-washy wishy, wishy -washy side now with the S2 Series that's mixed and match. And again, this isn't me going, ah, exposed. Um, it's just me explaining how it's all working. So I hope that was interesting to you guys. Um, thank you. As you guys know, I do this. No cue cards or anything. I have to do it from memory. So um, I appreciate you guys taking the time with me. And as always, uh, know your gear.